Hello class, this is the lecture for 4-4 from the Forrester textbook. We are going to be talking about interval notation and trig equations. So I need to teach you how to describe a range of numbers using this special thing called interval notation and how to solve trigonometric equations. So let's do that in those two parts. First of all, we're going to talk about interval notation. Now, you remember in interval, the thing that comes to my mind is always the number line, where you're saying x is greater than 2 and less than 4. And so like you would always draw a little hollow dot at 2 and a hollow dot at 4, and then you'd color in in between. And there was always a battle of like the people who wanted to color on the number line versus like the number line was holy and you had to draw above it. And then you were like, but wait, how can you tell if you're exactly on? or so, I always colored on the line. But anyway, whichever one you prefer is fine. That's not what we're going to talk about here. What we're talking about is replacing those less than and greater than uh, signs and the variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these new symbols where we're going to have the square brackets. So these are the like parentheses except they're very square edge. They're cut bits of rectangles. And those are going to take the place of less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So I always thought those were easy to remember because they have a little bar at the bottom and the greater than or equal to or the less than or equal to have a little bar at the bottom, a line at the bottom. Uh, then we need other symbols, the usual parentheses, the curvy parts of an oval uh, parentheses that uh, are going to take the place of greater than and less than. And this is all done without a variable. We're just going to say the range from here to there. And this allows us then to just describe a range of numbers and everything in between. So for example, the first one that you can see right there, from 0 to 4 inclusive. So we are, we've are we got the square sign there at 0, and that means we're allowed to be 0. We've got the squarish sign there at 4, that means we're allowed to be 4. So this would be, in the past, you would have written this as 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. But again, we don't have an x. It could be any variable. We could be talking about anything. We're just talking about the range of numbers from 0 to 4, including 0 and 4. But you can mix this up. You can mix in now. Let's add in one of the ones that's not or equal to. So we've got at 2, we've got the square bracket. That means you're allowed to touch 2 or equal to 2. But then on the 3, we've got the curvy one. So that means you're not allowed to be equal to 3. So we would have written this in the past. 2 is less than or equal to y, which is less than 3. But now we don't have to say y or x or theta or anything else that we want. We're just trying to describe a range of numbers. 2 to 3 can be 2, can't be 3. You can use two of the non-touching. So 5 to 7 means the range of numbers from 5 to 7, but not including 5 or 7 with the curly parentheses like that. And then you can do the other possible combination, which is to say from 10 to 12, you're allowed to be 12. You're not allowed to be 10. And any variable, we could be talking about domain, range, anything for these intervals. That's the great, that's why we invented interval notation as mathematicians, to be able to describe a range of numbers, an interval of numbers, without respect to any particular variable. So you try converting this one. Go ahead and use a variable like theta, most likely, uh, to turn this picture here into a old school less than or equal to, less than or equal to uh, kind of thing there. So we're going to put this into a regular three-part inequality and try turning that yourself with a variable. All right, so what did you get here? Are we allowed to touch 0? Are we allowed to touch 2 pi? The, the square bracket next to the 0 means you're allowed to be that. The curvy bracket uh, parentheses next to the 2 pi means you're not allowed to be that. This is actually the interval that you're going to see most commonly in trigonometry. Most of the time, people are saying, tell me an answer that's between 0 and 360 in radians, and don't bother with actually 360. That's making it all the way back to 0. But if you have 359.9999, include that. 
but everything right up to but not including 2 pi in, uh, in radians. So that's how we're going to use this interval notation and we're going to use this right away. This is something we need all the time to help restrict our answers. Um, so you should be able to go the other way as well, that if you traditionally see that x is uh, less than 2 or greater than or equal to 4, how would we write that in interval notation? Now notice this is one that's sort of flying out at both ends. There is no uh, biggest limit, there is no smallest limit. We now have to use these signs, these symbols that we've not used very much in your writing. You maybe have seen them or heard them talked about. But now we're going to have to use infinity sign for negative infinity and positive infinity. If x is less than 2, that means we're not allowed to be 2, and we're going on down from there all the way to without end to negative infinity. And if x is greater than or equal to 4, you're allowed to be 4, but there's no upper limit. It just goes forever, so we call that infinity. And now because infinity and negative infinity are not numbers, they're ideas, you're not allowed to, to touch them, to be equal to them. So we're always, always, always going to have a curve parentheses for the infinities. Okay, so the other half of 4-4 uh, is something that we've been building to and building to and seeing more and more here is now just general trig equations. Any old kind of trig could happen. Um, so the, the easiest stuff here is the thing that we talked about with the Fruit Ninja is to just say when does this happen? So for example this question says when does 2 cos x equal 1 in the range from 0 to 2 pi not including 2 pi but including 0. So there's that interval notation that we need we just learned needed right away and you could think of this uh, as a graph. So here I'll pull up the graph for you on my phone. Uh, we've got the graph uh, 2x, uh, 2 cos x, so that's a cosine wave that goes up to 2 and down to negative 2, and we've got the line y equals 1. And so it looks like they hit each other in two places, but if I scroll out here, you can see, of course, it's a cosine wave, and it just goes on and on and on forever. So there are an infinite number of answers, but they did restrict us and say we need to keep our answer between 0 and 2 pi. This thing is harder to zoom in on. So we're needing to go to between 0 and uh, 6 point something, that uh, 6.28 in that. So we want those two answers. Can I make it so only two answers are visible? We want those two intersection points. This is harder than I thought. Uh, we want those two intersection points right there. Those are the two ones that we're interested in. So it's probably easiest to solve this one algebraically, to uh, divide both sides by 2 and say, when is cosine equal to a half? So you're probably th still thinking in degrees. That's uh, 60 uh, degrees. So then we need the, um, no, is that 60 or is that uh, 30? That's, that's 60. So then that's pi over 3. So we want pi over 3, and then we want uh, pi over 3 in the fourth quadrant. So that's going to be 5 pi over 3. So your, uh, your, your fruit ninja diagram there, you say this is a cosine problem. This is talking about what is possible for x on the unit circle. We're wanting it to be half. So those are the, the two different places that that happens. Now, the equations can get to be more complicated. And you need to just sort of treat these like regular algebra style equations. And I think one of the, the scary things, one of the big deals in pre-calc is to be able to treat something, you're, you're very used to treating something with one letter as a thing. X is a thing. Y is a thing. Even Greek letters, theta. But now you kind of need to treat a four-letter combo. So in this case, S-I-N theta, C-O-S theta. That's one thing. You have to treat that as if it was an X. So when you look at this, you say, all right, I've got x squared uh, plus 
sine uh, x, you know, x squared plus y plus 1 equals 0. There's too many variables here. That this, this cosine, even if I treat cosine as one thing, then there's another thing. There's another sine. So I need to do something to turn this all into the same kind of equation. So pardon my handwriting here. Uh, iPad is in the shop, and so I'm going to have to write on my phone with my finger. But um, how can we turn sine into cosine or cosine squared into something to do with sine? We have a trig equation. We've been doing this. This is why we mess with the identities, is to learn stuff to say, OK, so, so cos squared, cos squared, that's equal to 1 minus sine squared. We can substitute one for the other. And then we had a sine and we had a 1. And that was all equal to 0. So if we, if we move these pieces around and put some on, and put everything, let's just put everything on the other side, then we'll get 0 equals sine squared plus, minus sine plus minus 2. And now, if you get scared, if this is still overwhelming, if you're not able to do what I was talking about there of having the sine theta treat that as one thing, then you can, you can use substitution here. You can say let u equal sine theta. But I'm going to assume that you're OK with this. Um, see me uh, in person if you need more help with substitution there. But you can see that we've got something squared minus something minus 2. So that's a very easy to factor uh, quadratic. And so that is sine theta minus 2 times sine theta plus 1. That was a really terrible plus sign. What happened there? And so that's plus 1. So now, since those are both equal to 0, we can uh, say that either sine theta equals 2 or sine theta equals uh, minus 1. And when does sine equal 2? Never. It never equals 2. There is a, a limit to where sine goes. It goes between 1 and negative 1. So this part has no answers. There's nothing that satisfies that. But then, when you try to think when does sine, the, the y value on the unit circle, when does it equal negative 1, you should, you should think of the fruit ninja slice down there. The y is equal to negative 1. That's cutting down at the bottom. Well, that only happens down there at uh, 270 degrees. Now, look back to the original top of the problem here where we restricted our answers. 270 is not quite allowed. It's got that curvy uh, parentheses on it, so we can't answer 270. But we can answer negative 90. Negative 90 is the same as 270, so the only answer we get is negative 90. Now, there are some problems that are too hard for us to be able to do by hand. If somebody ever mixes in x's and sine x's, or cos x's, or tan x's, then that gets to be really, really difficult, if not impossible, to solve by hand. And so we're going to use the computer for that. So I've got those equations ready here. Let me pull those up. So here you can see I've got a uh, equation of so, yeah, so 0.2x plus uh, sine x I've graphed in green there for you and then uh, 2 I've graphed in purple and you can see over there in the vicinity of 12 and 9 and 7 that there are three answers. However, they are way too difficult for us to do by hand so you're going to have to put, if there's a problem like that, you're going to have to put it in your calculator and use the intersect feature of the grapher. So here's the pretty version that I made over there. Again, sort of showing you there's no way to solve this by hand. If it's all trig equations and, uh, and numbers, trig functions and numbers, that's something that we can usually play around with and use identities to turn stuff into something that will factor or clean up. But if it's if you bring in the normal x's, plain x's, then it gets to be too hard to solve. 
So for your homework, I would like for you to do number 21 and 22 in section 4-4, and they should look like this kind of uh, fruit ninja slice. So those uh, sorts of answers, it should be what you should be finding, just to give you a little hint there. And uh, also do uh, 23 and 24. So uh, I hope these hints help you with that and we can talk about it in class. So uh, those are the problems I would like you to bring and I'll see you in class.